Hello students, I am here with a new video that is a Kingdom Monera part 2 Eubacteria. In the previous video, I have talked about the Archibacteria, the same kingdom, that is Kingdom Monera and in this part I am discussing about the Eubacteria. Before going directly to what is Eubacteria, we can just recall about the what is Monerans and the, what are the characteristics of Monerans and come, we can slowly come into the Eubacteria. Okay. Let's go direct discuss with the Kingdom Monera. And this Kingdom Monera, I, as we discussed in the last class, they are the biological kingdom that made of prokaryotes. I, I think you guys watched my previous video. If you watched the previous video, you can understand that. If you are not uh, first time watching this video, means you just go through that video and come and see this one. Okay. So Monera, they are the biological kingdom that is made up of prokaryotes. Prokaryotes means that is pro means false. Karyotes means false, uh, karyotes means nu nucleus, that is pro means absent, karyotes means neuter, that is the absence of nucleus or the true nucleus is absent in the case of the monirans or they are called as a prokaryotes. And these organisms belong to the kingdom do not contain the true nucleus, that is not false nucleus or they do not have the true nucleus, their nuclear membrane is absent. Because of that, they are called naked DNA. That is, their DNA is not enclosed within the nuclear membrane. And they are also serve the environmental decomposers. That is, Kingdom Monera, they include the unicellular, prokaryotic unicellular organisms. And they do not contain the true nucleus. And the DNA is not enclosed within the nuclear membrane. That is, it, they have the de naked DNA. Naked DNA means there is a circular DNA is there, but it is not enclosed inside or is not protected inside or it is not enclosed inside a nuclear membrane. That is nuclear membrane is absent and they can be seen in the environment or within the soil. So, they are known as environmental decomposers. And next is a characteristic of the monerans. In the characteristic of monerans that you also we discussed in the last class that is they are the unicellular prokaryotic organisms and in their cell they contain 70s ribosomes and the simple chromatophores that is they are the unicellular prokaryotic forms and they have the 70s ribosomes as well as the simple chromatophores in their cytoplasms and their DNA is naked and is not bounded by the nuclear membrane that is naked DNA means the DNA that is a circular DNA is there but it is not enclosed in a nuclear envelope that is true nucleus is absent and they have a rigid cell wall cell wall is there right these organisms or this bacteria they have the cell wall is there but there is a outer covering is there that is called cell wall and that cell wall is rigid and made up of peptidoglycan and they actually lacks most of the membrane bound cell organelles they don't have the most of the membrane bound cell organelles that is a cytoplasm contain most of the organelles are there and they are absent in the case of this kingdom monera that is mitochondria is absent lysosome is absent plastids golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum and centrosomes are absent in the cell of the that is this um, prokaryotes or these unicellular organisms and they have the locomotory organ is present in this organ so that is a flagella they use as a locomotory organ they are the slender hair like appendages they can be seen in the few numbers that is either single at one end or at uh, single at both ends or numerous at one or two ends that is not numerous it's actually few numbers and they reproduce usually by the asexual mode of reproduction that is by binary fission as well as a or the budding method when either binary fission or by using the budding method they reproduce asexually and they show different mode of nutrition the mode of nutrition is different in this organism that is some are autotrophic some are heterotrophic some are parasitic and some are saprophytic this also we discussed in the last class that the last video autotrophic means they produce their own food and parasitic means that depends on the other they leave on other organisms and get the nutrients from that that is called parasitic and the heterotrophic means they using the uh, uh, depends on the other organism for their food that is a heterotrophic or saprophytic saprophytic means they lease on the dead organic matters and get the nutrients from that that is called heterotrophic 
and next is the classification of the kingdom monera the kingdom monera in the last class we told that it's classified into two sub kingdom that is a kingdom archibacteria and next is a eubacteria and here is a flow chart of the classification of the kingdom monera that is domain rk and a domain eubacteria that is kingdom monera is classified into two domains that is domain rk and domain eubacteria and first is the domain rk that is archibacteria is coming under this one and it is classified into two based on their habitat that is where they are living based on their habitat they are classified into that is methanogens halophiles and thermo acidophiles that means they are called as this archaebacteria are called as extremophiles they can be lived in extreme uh, environment conditions or habitat that is methanogens that is the absence of oxygen they can be and produces a methane gas okay and the halophiles halophiles means they can be live in the salty environment and thermoacidophiles high temperature above the boiling point they can be and examples of the methanogens are methanococcus halophiles are the halococcus thermoacidophiles are sulfobles and these are the domain archaea we discussed in uh, detail in the previous video about the archaea bacteria and in this bacteria we are going to discuss about the domain new bacteria or uh, simply bacteria and that is bacteria that is ribo rhizobium some of the examples are given one one examples are given here that's bacteria and rhizobium or staphylococcus is a bacteria streptococcus is a bacteria cyanobacteria that is a nostoc and a bina and mycoplasma mycoplasma pneumonia is there then mycoplasma genitalium is there then actinomyces streptomyces species rickettsia rickettsia typhi and leptospira but in this uh, here in this classification we are discussing about the bacteria cyanobacteria and mycoplasma in detail other are we are in the coming in the uh, uh, following chapters so we are not discussing in detail here and we are detailed about the bacteria cyanobacteria and mycoplasma in this video okay so next is a video about the u bacteria we know that the common common characteristic of the kingdom monera right so archaea bacteria and the bacteria they have more or less similarities are there and dissimilarities also is there that is Mm, they have some common characters are there but some different characters each have individual characters are there right so bacteria as we said that monerans that are they are the unicellular prokaryotic form bacteria also they are the unicellular prokaryotic forms so we can go to the bacteria okay bacteria they are also known as u bacteria that is a they are the true bacterian forms and this bacteria is the sole member of the kingdom monera so kingdom monera one of the very important or one of the main member of this kingdom monera is the archibac sorry u bacteria or the bacteria and they are abundant in the environment right the abundant means millions of microorganisms or the bacteria are present in our environment on earth and they are almost everywhere you can see this bacteria on air is there if you take the bacteria it is present in on or inside the body inside our body inside animals body on our body on the skin eyes hair nose mouth anywhere you can more it means in these places you can see numerous bacteria are present that is they are present in the soil they are present in the water everywhere you can see this and can survive in the diverse environment they can survive in the various environment condition hot cold dry conditions they can survive so that is bacteria they are the abundant microorganism present on our planet as well as they are the present almost everywhere and can survive in the diverse environment and various environmental conditions and the numerous bacteria are present in the soil that is diverse environment condition that is they are present numerous in the soil also nitrogen fixing bacteria are there right decomposers are there so they are present in the soil also and the structure of the bacteria as we discussed they are have a very simple structure they have only few organelles present few membrane bound organelles cytoplasm outside the body also they have few organelles are there but what happened they have the very complex mechanism is a very complex characteristic they are showing that is they have very simple when we are studying about the bacteria we might think oh it's very simple organisms that they don't have the true nucleus they have only few cell organelles but they have very complex characters their characteristics are entirely different and then they may be useful as well as harmful to the human beings as well as the environment
okay so they are beneficial bacteria are there harmful bacteria are there they are actually where structure is very simple without a true nucleus and a very few cell organelles present but they have very complex characteristics and next is a these organelles fall under the kingdom monera right we know that kingdom monera is divided into two rk and u bacteria so this is coming under or it is falling under the kingdom monera and is one of the largest kingdom that is u bacteria or the bacteria they are the largest kingdom and they are also known as a true bacteria so they are the true bacterian forms that you can see that is a true bacteria why they are called true bacteria that is they lack the true nucleus that is nuclear membrane is absent bacteria means they are prokaryotic right pro means what absent or the false karyo means nucleus that is a absence of nucleus or the presence of false nucleus they are called as a true bacteria or the bacterian so that means they are unicellular prokaryotic organisms that is devoid of true nucleus that is absence devoid means absence of true nucleus they are the unicellular prokaryotic organisms and they contain the dna that is a single circular dna is present okay their dna is a single circular dna and it is not enveloped or enclosed in a true nuclear membrane so they are the unicellular single celled prokaryotic organisms and in addition to this dna they have an extra cellular genetic material or the dna known as a plasmid okay that is what is a plasmid that is an extra circular genetic material that is present in the cytoplasm of the organism that is called as the plasmid and what's the function of this plasmid this plasmid mainly help the bacteria to resistant to the antibiotics this um, <clears throat> bacteria are uh, susceptible to antibiotics that is they can be inhibited or killed by the use of the antibiotics so when the plasmid with the help of this plasmid there's a small circular or extra circular dna or genetic material that is present in the cytoplasm of the bacteria that is called plasmid they help some of the strain to resist against the bacteria that is we nowadays we know that resistant bacteria emerge right so by their resistant there are so many other mechanisms they can be resistant to the antibiotics right but still one one way is the presence of plasmid in some strains it will be helpful for them that is they can resist to the antibiotics and next is many of them lives as a parasite in instead of living it as a single organisms most of them or many of them are say living as a parasites that lives on the other organisms and infecting them may be harmful ways or in the uh, useful ways they have they are living as a parasite and they live in extreme habitat as we told that they live everywhere in the diverse environment conditions right so they live extreme habitat they are living in extreme habitat such as hot places springs deserts that is snow and deep oceans that is they can survive in salty environment they cannot be survive they can survive means thrive out the uh, cold some hot conditions so that it they live they are living in a they can survive in a extreme habitat various environmental conditions they can survive and bacteria is usually surrounded by that is bacteria as we told in the last class they have a protective outer covering that is an outer covering that is covers that is called a cell wall the function of cell wall is a bacteria is a protection as well as a giving shape that is they are the rigid cell wall that presents in the bacteria that aids in the protection as well as a give shapes to the bacteria and they are the cell wall outer cell wall there is a two protective coating mainly they are outer cell wall or inner cell membrane that is covers the plasma membrane right plasma membrane is surrounded by a inner one membrane is a, that is called as a uh, no sorry the cytoplasm is covered by a membrane that is called as a plasma membrane and outer in the plasma membrane is a cell wall that is two protective covering are there in the bacterial cell they are outer cell wall or inner plasma membrane or cell membrane and the bacterial cell wall is made up of either lipopolysaccharide or peptidoglycan so the bacterial cell wall is made up of a protein called a special protein called as the peptidoglycan and also some in some cases there is a lipopolysaccharides are present some bacteria also covered by a gelatinous outer covering that is called as the capsule the main function of the capsule is helping the protections that is with the help of this uh, capsule they can protect from the immune system protect this bacteria those having this capsule or extra outer covering that protects or invades the evades the host immune 
action that is uh, when a pathogen enters into our body what the our immune system will do immune system will recognize this pathogen and send out the immune cells to and destroy or destruct this pathogen right they are the foreign body so our body recognizes it as a foreign particle and try to inhibit or kill those particles so if the bacteria those having the outer extra outer that is capsule they are protected or evaded from our immune system because our uh, because of the presence of this capsule the our immune system cannot be easily recognize this one and can not inhibit because they are mostly inhibiting these inhibitors are mostly inhibiting onto the cell wall of this bacteria so if there is an extra protective coating means they cannot inhibit they cannot reach out to the cell wall of this bacteria and cannot inhibit them so by this, that is acting as a protection that is bacteria that is having some in some some bacteria there is a special outer covering called as a capsule that helps the protection from our host immune action okay then few bacteria they are called mycoplasma they do not have cell wall they are the they lack cell wall cell wall deficient bacteria are called as a mycoplasma and another appendage is there is a initial first one is a cell wall there is a outer cell wall is the protective covering called a cell wall inner to the cell wall there is a what is cell membrane is there that is a plasma membrane and outer to the cell wall is what a capsule is there right the next is a pili pili is a or pi you can pronounce in pili or pili okay they are the small hair like appendage is a short that is a size is very short they are the few millimeters length that is a short hair like appendages that is present all over the surface of the bacterial cell that helps the bacteria to attach themselves to the host cells and not only the attachment some of the other functions of this they are again okay, using the locomotions they are using they help in the uh, sexual reproduction they are helping in the bacteria so the pili they are the short hair like appendages on the surface of the bacterial cells that help the bacteria to attach themselves to the host cells and they are actually numerous in number the pili is also known as fimbriae okay this pili is also known as a fimbriae they are the short or small hair like appendages that covers the surface of the bacterial cells that helps the bacterial cells in the locomotion attachment as well as the reproductions and flagella they are the locomotory organ of the bacteria flagella they are the elongated slender hair like appendages that is present on one end or both the end may be one or few in numbers on the both the ends of the bacterial cells they helps in the locomotion of the movement of the organisms there is a pili is there they are the short they are also helping in the movement but main or the important locomotory organ or the functioning of the locomotory organ like we are using the legs like and like that flagella is the locomotory organ of the bacteria and they show diverse metabolic activity i told you that they have a simple structure and they lack the true nucleus but with few of the cell organelles they show diverse metabolic activity they have the diverse characteristics are there and the bacteria follows an asexual usually they follows an asexual mode of reproduction that is by binary fission as well as a budding and here it is by binary fission what is meant by binary fission that is cell is divided into two right from each daughter cells is again divided into two that is one cell become two and two each one is divided into two the two becomes four right that that is a increasing doubling the number of the cells that is called binary fission that is a sexual mode of reproduction that is binary fission here the bacteria cells here what what is going on in this binary fission the bacteria cells you can see that bacteria cells are that right so the in circular dna is there dna starts elongating and they actually separated and uh, when the dna is starting elongating or dividing what is happened the cell starts to elongate and the when cell starts to elongate and this is surrounded another protective covering is surrounding this separated extra formed dna right and that cell is uh, the, the elongated and they actually divide or departed into 
two daughter cells and in this two daughter cells e, e, this one each one is divided into two that becomes one is divided into two and this two two is divided into again two that means becomes four cells that is called binary fission but it can also undergo sexual reproduction in some of the very rare cases sexual reproduction also is undergoing in the case of bacteria and the reproduction time and rate usually depends upon the condition like mainly temperature and the availability of the nutrients when there is the no nutrients they undergo a dormant stage and the temperature they, if they require the bacteria requires the adequate temperature for their reproduction or the divisions if they attain that particular temperature they starts dividing uncontrolled division they fastly they divide and reproduce and produces the millions of cells at a time okay that is the rate and the timing of reproduction depends on the conditions like temperature they require adequate temperature as well as a adequate nutrients are also available for them if there is a nutrients available that is we know that bacteria are growing in a culture media that is when a new cell is introduced into a pure culture media that becomes filled with the lots of nutrients so and if you kept incubated incubation means that is a, uh, a special condition in which we are giving the proper appropriate temperature for the growth of this individual organism or the bacteria what we are inoculated the procedure that we are putting this new strain into a um, that is uh, culture media or the plate that is called inoculation that is inoculating we are injecting into the media and that inoculation what we are doing is incubating incubation means that is we are giving setting a temperature and a, uh, that is required for this bacteria to divide and keeping it for the uh, hours that is from 6 to 3 days that is 6 hours to maximum 3 to 7 days we are keeping for many days it actually de depends on the different strains of bacteria okay that is some bacteria requires only 30 minutes within 30 minutes they starts to divide okay in that is when they reach into a new environment they, there will be a few and that is a actually lag phase is there log phase is there or exponential phase then a decline phase uh, no stationary phase then comes a decline phase right that is how the growth pattern is there so <clears throat> initially they the lag phase they are adjusting to the new environment once they adjust to the new environment they exponentially that is a log phase they uncontrolled division and forms a large colony of these organisms and when the nutrients start depleting and the waste products are accumulated into the media they are con uh, they are can say steady state stationary state then start slowly starts growing because there is a depletion of the nutrients into the that that is what we say according to the temperature and availability of the nuclei nutrients they the rate and timing of the uh, reproduction varies okay the ribosomes are the site of the protein synthesis that is a protein synthesis are going inside the bacteria cells that is a uh, area where the protein synthesis is ribosomes and they may be autotrophs or heterotrophs saprophytes parasites and symbionts that is bacteria may be autotrophic bacteria are there heterotrophic are there saprophytic are there parasitic are there as well as the symbionts symbionts means they are in the conducting the mutualism okay and they may be photosynthetic autotrophs or chemosynthetic autotrophs may be of two types that is photosynthetic autotrophs and chemosynthetic autotrophs this is a cell structure of the bacteria bacterial cell structure as i discussed in this you can see that is a cell wall is there rigid cell wall is there see the pink shade is a cell wall and inner that is a cytoplasm is a blue color and cytoplasm is covered by the cell membrane or cytoplasmic membrane is there or the plasma membrane is there and outer to the cell wall is the capsular layer or the slime layer that is helps in the protection from the host immune system cell wall also helps in the protections and they are the rigid and give shape to the bacteria cells and the uh, cell membrane that is covering the cytoplasm and inside cytoplasms that you can see the chromosomes a single circular chromosomes is there and ribosome is present that is a protein site of protein synthesis inclusion bodies are there plasmid is there that is extra circular dna material that helps mainly that is a genetic that is a 
this is a genetic material that's a chromosome is there right and this plasmid is an extra circular genetic material or a DNA that is called as a plasmid that helps mainly in the what resistant some of the bacteria to resist against the antibiotics and here is you can see on outside the uh, cell wall you can see that uh, some of the hair like appendages that's a numerous in number that's a fimbri or pili is there right and a long elongated structure thin elongated structure that's called flagella that's a locomotory organ of this bacterial cells next is the characteristic of the eubacteria and in the characteristic of eubacteria you can see that uh, we already discussed it but uh, i have made it into a slide because easily you can read out that's what are the characteristics instead of going through all the slides single slides can make out that what is the characteristic of eubacter right they are the unicellular prokaryotic microscopic cells and they have an outer protective covering called cell wall that is a rigid and made up of a protein called a peptidoglycan or murine and in some cases there is a lipopolysaccharide are present and they lack the nuclear membrane that is a naked dna and on outer layer a short appendages that is called as a pili that helps during the sexual reproduction that is called as sexual sex pili and attachment as well as a locomotion and they are numerous in number in the previous slide you saw that the number varies the flagella one is there but numerous are there in the pili and the locomotory organ is the flagella there may be one or few in number and the also cytoplasm contain the 70s ribosome that is a site of protein synthesis and also plasmids are there they are the extracellular genetic material that helps in the resistance of the bacteria to the uh, antibiotics and you can see the inclusion bodies are present there okay these are about the characteristic of bacteria and there next is a classification of the eubacteria and based on the the bacteria are classified mainly into four class, class, class uh, classification there are four classification and these are mainly based on their features and characteristics okay based on their features and their some of the characteristics these are mainly divided into four types that is bacteria classification of bacteria mainly based on the following that is based on the shape they are classified they are classified based on the cell wall composition of the cell wall components and their mode of respiration they are classified and the mode of nutrition also so these are the um, features or the characteristics that leads to the classification of the bacteria first one is the based on the shape they are classified based on the cell wall composition they are classified then based on the respiration mode of respiration and last one is the mode of nutrition then we can go through that slides okay that is the classification of the bacteria based on the shape that is cocci that we discussed in the last video right that is a coccus is there that means a circular shaped bacillus rod shaped spiral means corkshoe shaped or the screw shaped that is a spiral bacteria that is a curved spiral bacteria then vibrio that is a comma shaped bacteria and some of the examples here the bacillus that is a escherichia coli that is a e coli is a bacilli then bacillus anthras is a bacilli then spirilla there is a pyrochaeus or spirillum volutens then the spirochaeus are the examples okay tryponema pallidum then coccus that is a streptococcus and that is a staphylococcus the cluster then pneumococci is there that is in pairs then vibrio cholerae that is a vibrio that is a comma shaped with the one flagella at the one end it has a curved body structure and the next slide shows that some of the images of the bacteria based on the classified based on the shape as well as the arrangement okay so see here you can see that the cocci that is a spherical shaped or the circular shaped bacteria they are arranged in pair, singles pairs as well as in the group of four eight and the clusters they are chains and that is a coccus is a single word and the diplococci they say diplo means two diplococci encapsulated means there is a presence of capsule there is a pneumococci or the klebsiella pneumonia uh, sorry klebsiella pneumonia is not a that is actually bacilli um, <clears throat> diplococci that is a pneumococci is there and pneumococci then nesira gonira that is also a cocci that is the diplococci and next is a staphylococci they are in the cluster grape like clusters then the chains bacteria are arranged in the, the coccus are in the chain that is streptococci then sarcina that is a uh, um, group of eight tetrad means group of four 
then bacillus also the bacillus means rod shaped structures uh, elongated body there are coco bacillus means either cocci or bacillus forms that's a bacillus is a bacillus anthracis that is a uh, bacillus then diplo bacilli there is a two bacilli and strepto bacilli chain of bacillus then palisadic arrangement means you can see that in this picture you can see edge edge is one and one and is actually joining and forms a chain like structures and other groups are the club shaped bacteria they are there then vibrios are there they are the comma shaped bacteria spiral forms are helicobacter pylori helical shape is there then spirochetae that is a cork screw shaped and filamentous forms are there then hyphal forms and appendages stalked forms are there these are the arrangements or the shape of bacteria and they classified also the classifications okay next is a, a classification of bacteria based on the composition of the cell wall cell wall components based on the cell wall components they are classified into that is peptidoglycan that is a gram positive and gram negative bacteria the gram positive that is having the peptidoglycan cell wall uh, the peptidoglycan cell wall is present uh, this bacteria cell wall is a rigid and is made up of peptidoglycan right or lipopolysaccharide okay and the peptidoglycan cell wall that is a gram positive and they are uh, uh, and another group is a gram negative they are called a lipopolysaccharide cell wall and why they are uh, classified in the gram positive and gram negative that we said that is a cell wall component and how that is based on their reaction to a stain gram stain that is a purple stain is there that is a gram stain um, based on the reaction of their cell to the particular stain they are classified in the Christian gram who classified the bacteria into two groups that is a gram positive and gram negative based on the cell wall components okay that is gram positive organism that retain the stain and appears in the purple color and gram negative organism that washed out on decolorization it washed out the primary stains and take the uh, counter stains or the re, um, secondary stains that you are adding and it gains the pink color the gram positive is actually purple color because of the rigid cell wall the peptidoglycan is present they are not uh, washed out they are retained in the cell the purple color is retained in the cells and they are appears as a purple after the secondary staining also but in the case of gram negative organisms they are actually not retained and are removed from the cell once it is uh, decolorized or uh, on the staining procedure there is a decoloration procedure is there okay one step is there on that step what will happen the primary stains is washed off and take out the secondary stain <clears throat> and appears as a pink color that is gram positive appear in the purple and gram negative will appear in the pink color that is gram positive that is a staphylococcus is a gram positive gram negative that is a e coli that is gram positive they appear as a purple color the staphylococcus then gram negative that is a E. coli that is a Escherichia coli they are in appears as a pink cell that is a Klebsiella they are also gram negative bacteria then streptococci they are the gram positive bacteria okay and the mode of respiration that is taking oxygen in or taking carbon dioxide based on that actually they are divided into anaerobic bacteria as well as the aerobic there are main classification there may be obligate anaerobic facultative anaerobic there okay strict and this is actually anaerobic bacteria this anaerobic bacteria means they live under <clears throat> anaerobic conditions they do not require oxygen for their growth and development that is ectomycetes then clostridium is an example of the uh, anaerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria that is aerobic that is they require oxygen for their growth that is normal e coli is require oxygen then mycobacteria most of the bacteria are the what <clears throat> aerobic bacteria this is a anaerobic bacteria examples actinomyces as well as the um, clostridium species are also anaerobic and next is the mode of nutrition based on the um, nutrition mode how they are taking in the food that is they are preparing self or depending on others they are classified autotrophic and the heterotrophic bacteria autotrophic bacteria that is cyanobacteria and heterotrophic bacteria all disease causing bacteria are coming under the heterotrophic bacteria and next is the coming under the eubacteria is our bacteria is a cyanobacteria and cyanobacteria as we all know that they are also known as blue green algae cyanobacteria 
cyanobacter is also known as blue green algae that is why they are called blue green algae the name itself is there is a green colored pigment as in the green plants they have a chlorophyll a is present and are photosynthetic autotrophs why they are called blue green algae because they contain the chlorophyll as in the green plants green plants contain the green colored pigment called chlorophyll right so blue green algae also has a chlorophyll pigment that is chlorophyll a is present and are photosynthetic autotrophs they are the photosynthetic autotrophs and other pigment that is present in this blue green algae are carotenoids and phycobilins are the, some of the <coughs> few of the more important pigment that is present other than the chlorophyll are the carotenoids and phycobilin and they are also unicellular organisms the monirans all are unicellular right then they are filamentous or colonial this may be appear as a filament forms as well as the colony or in groups you can see they can be seen as well as the uh, sorry they can be seen in fresh water as well as the marine environment or can be seen as a terrestrial algae they are either seen in the water that is water may be fresh water or marine environment as well as a terrestrial living on the land algae we can see this okay that is the feature the cyanobacteria they are also known as blue green algae that blue green algae that is what is a cyanobacteria why they are called blue green algae because they contain the important green color pigment called chlorophyll a as in green plants and they are photosynthetic autotrophs and they contain carotenoids and phycobilins these are the other pigment the important pigment that is present in the blue green algae and they are unicellular organs a single cell they may be either filamentous form or as a colonial form that is they may be unicellular filamentous or colonial forms and they can be seen in the fresh water as well as the marine water or can be as a terrestrial and the colonies are surrounded by a gelatinous it has a gel like texture you can see as a sheet on the surface of the colonies and <clears throat> they in the polluted water if the water is not clean or the fresh water if it is a polluted water you can see they form a blooms they often forms a blooms in the polluted water and they can fix atmospheric nitrogen in a specialized cell called heterocytes is a heterocytes is present in this organisms that helps to fix the atmospheric nitrogen that is present in the this cyanobacteria that is they are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen why they are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen because there is a heterocytes a specialized cell is present in this organisms that's what is the function of this specialized cell to fix the atmospheric nitrogen with the help of this heterocytes cyanobacteria is able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen examples of the cyanobacteria are nostoc and abena and filamentous blue green algae example is the nostoc and the abena they are the filamentous blue green algae okay and next cyanobacteria they are also as a chemosynthetic autotroph chemosynthetic means from the chemical substances they are preparing that is they oxidizes the various inorganic substances such as nitrates nitrites and ammonia and the why oxidizing these substances they release energy for their atp production energy is released and they are used for the atp production that is these organisms oxidizes various inorganic substances such as nitrates nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for their atp productions that is called chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria they are the chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria we told that some are they are the photosynthetic autotrophic right and here they are also called as chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria because oxidizes various inorganic substances such as nitrates nitrites and ammonia and uses this energy for their atp productions and they play an important role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and sulfur they actually plays a main role or major role in recycling some of the nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and sulfur next is heterotrophic bacteria and the heterotrophic bacteria they are abundant in nature this heterotrophic bacteria they are abundant in nature 
and majority are decomposers. Heterotrophy means depends on other, right? The most abundant in the nature is the heterotrophic bacteria and majority are decomposers. They are helpful in making curd from milk. Production of antibiotics. Fixing nitrogen in legume roots. These heterotrophic bacteria, they help in making curd from milk. Production of antibiotics. Fixing nitrogen in legume roots. Some are pathogen cause infection the human beings crops, farm animals and pests. They are not only useful animal, we told that beneficial as well as a harmful right bacteria. So they help in making curd from lactobacillus, curd from milk, then production streptomyces, then fixing nitrogen, nitrogen fixing bacteria right. Then decomposers are there and some are pathogen that cause in pathogen means pathogenic organism that is disease causing organism that causes the infections in the human beings, crops, farm animals and pests and some of the infections that is mainly caused by these are the cholera, non-infection these all are the we are commonly known cholera by Vibrio cholerae, typhoid means sal salmonella type V, tetanus means clostridium tetanus that causes a tetanus are some of the non-infection caused by the bacteria okay that is these are the, in which they are the, they are useful organisms as well as the harmful. Useful means curdling of the milk, that is a curd preparation from the milk, then antibiotics protection, nitrogen fixing in the legume plants. Mm. And here the uh, infection causing pathogens are there like cholera, typhoid, tetanus are caused by this, pneumonia, these are all causing by the bacteria, okay. And the bacteria reproduce mainly by the binary fission, that is dividing into the mother cell is dividing into two daughter cells and this daughter cells again divide into each daughter cells dividing into two, two new cells and like that it is doubling the number of cells that is called binary fission. And when the unfavorable condition they produce a spores when the um, this I told you that reproduction that the rate and timing of reproduction mainly depend on the temperature as well as the availability of nutrients. When the favorable condition is not occur or when the condition is unfavorable, not suitable for the organism to re reproduce, they produce as a spores. Okay. And they also reproduce by sexual reproduction. I told you that in some cases there may be sexual reproduction also possible in this bacteria. And next one is a mycoplasma. Okay. Mycoplasma, they are the living organisms that are the cell wall deficient bacteria. Mycoplasma are called as a cell wall deficient bacteria that is these organisms that completely lack the cell wall. So these organisms can change in shape because this cell wall actually rigid and give shape as well as protection. So if there is a deficiency or they are lack cell wall means they can appear in any shape that is pleomorphic. That is called pleomorphic that is the lack uh, completely like the cell wall because of that they can change their shape and are pleomorphic and they are the smallest self replicating free living organisms that is a, they are the smallest free living organisms they are self replicating organisms and the cell wall like a bacteria cell wall, cell wall is there right but what happens cell wall there is a peptidoglycan is there but in the mycoplasma peptidoglycan is absent big why there is no cell wall and this characteristic make them because cell wall deficient, they do not have the cell wall. Bacteria cell wall contain a special protein called peptidoglycan, right? Here they do not have the cell wall, so they do not have the peptidoglycan. Because of this characteristic or these special features, they are not inhibited by the most of the cell wall inhibitors. That is, what does it mean? That is, uh, most of the antibiotics that is produced in the market, they usually target on the cell wall of the bacteria. There is a special receptors on the cell wall and we actually, uh, um, what uh, pharmaceutical companies, they design that antibiotics against the target sites. There is a special target structures will be there. So, be, uh, to that target site we are actually building the antibiotics that is cell wall inhibitors and once this target site is not there it cannot attack this or kill inhibit these organisms because that particular target is not in the cell wall is not there. 
so cell wall inhibitors are not able to target these organisms because this characteristic makes them naturally resistant to antibiotics they are naturally resistant to antibiotics because they don't have the cell wall that what kind of antibiotics not all antibiotics that is the antibiotics that are targeting the cell wall synthesis because they don't have the cell wall then how can they attack the cell wall example that's a beta lactam antibody that's a beta lactam antibody they are the cell wall inhibitors or cell wall synthesis inhibitor that target the cell wall of the bacterial cell but in this case of mycoplasma there is a cell wall absent they lack the cell wall because of that they become naturally resistant to this kind of antibodies that is a, those that are inhibiting the cell wall or uh, attacking the cell wall of the bacteria and they are facultative anaerobes facultative anaerobes they are not a strict anaerobe they are the facultative anaerobes they can live in the presence as well as the absence of oxygen so they can survive in the anaerobic condition also so anaerobic means absence of oxygen without oxygen and comes in various shapes that is pleomorphic and in the case of mycoplasma genitalium they are actually flask shaped and mycoplasma pneumonia is a more elongated in shape that is a uh, mycoplasma genitalium is a flask shape pneumonia is actually elongated shape and many mycoplasma species are coccoid in form that is a coccus form circular forms most of them are ok. But special cases like mycoplasma genitalium and pneumonia genitalium is a flask shape and pneumonia is a elongated shape because they are pleomorphic they do not have the uh, rigid cell wall is absent because of that they can attain any shape they can change their shape ok. And they can be parasitic or saprophytic that these organisms can be either living as a parasite or living as a saprophyte that is the dead organic. And they are pathogenic microorganisms cause many infections of humans, plants and animals but most of them are harmless. They are pathogenic microorganisms, they are not the useful microorganisms, they are not the harmless microorganisms, they are pathogenic that is disease causing microorganisms but not all the strains are disease causing right. That is they causes the many infections in the humans, plants and animals but most of them are harmless. Example mycoplasma pneumonia they are actually the important cause of the walking pneumonia ok and other respiratory disorders are also caused by this mycoplasma pneumonia and mycoplasma genitalium they are believed to be causing the genital infection that is pelvic inflammatory disease are mainly caused by the mycoplasma genitalium that is mycoplasma pneumonia the walking pneumonia and other respiratory disorders are caused by this mycoplasma pneumonia and mycoplasma genitalium which is believed to be involved in the pelvic inflammatory disease. Then some of the antibodies that can kill this mycoplasma are tetracycline, macrolides, quinolones and three other class of the three are the class of the antibodies that can kill the mycoplasma ok. Mycoplasma are inhibited or killed or destroyed or mycoplasma are sensitive to tetracycline, macrolides and quinolones. And this is the structure of the mycoplasma you can see the outer there is a three layered cell membrane they do not have the cell wall but a thick layered three layered cell membrane is there and this is cytoplasm is there and covering cytoplasm cell membrane or cytoplasmic membrane that is called three layered and there is a soluble protein present here and soluble RNA is there then the ribosome is there then DNA circular DNA is there but there is a no nuclear true nucleus there is a no nuclear membrane bound to the DNA there is no cell wall also. they are cell wall deficient form right and this is structure of mycoplasma cell they mainly causes the sexually transmitted disease STDs that is STD means sexually transmitted disease then pneumonia atypical pneumonia and other respiratory diseases unaffected by many antibiotics they are resistant they cannot be inhibited to inhibited by many antibiotics they are insensitive or resistant. Next is the common use of this monirans kingdom monirans that is monirans are very useful organisms they enrich they are increase the richness of the soil and they serve an important part of the nitrogen cycle they also help in protection of some food items as, this, as well as the antibiotics and methanogens 
they actually plays an important role in the treatment of the sea waste that the methane gas is produced from the waste right and many organisms that rely on archaebacteria as a source of food they are taken some of the many of the organisms they depends on the archaebacteria they as a source of the food so these are the uses of the monerans that is they enrich the soil and serves as an important part of the nitrogen cycle they also helpful in the production of some food items and the antibiotics and they are also important role in the treatment of the sea waste that is mainly methanogens and many bacteria that is depends on the archaebacteria they act as a source, source of food next is a slide show some of the difference and the similarities between archaebacteria and eubacteria archaebacteria and eubacteria this is a cell type cell wall membrane lipid first amino acids in all the proteins antibody sensitivity dna organization known for that is archaebacteria mainly they are prokaryotic and bacteria also they are prokaryotic and cell wall in the archaebacteria there is a no peptidoglycan peptidoglycan is absent and the bacteria contain peptidoglycan membrane lipid that is ether linked and the case of bacteria is ester linked and first amino acid in all the protein that is a methionine and the bacteria here is a formyl methionine and the antibody sensitivity archaebacteria no antibody sensitivity and bacteria they are mostly sensitive to antibiotics and dna organization that is a circular with the histone is there then the circular and that they are mainly known for they the archaebacteria they live in the extreme environmental conditions and they, most of them are non infectious to humans and bacteria they can they can survive in the, they, they don't need that extreme environmental condition they can live in any environmental condition they don't need the extreme conditions but uh, uh, both helpful and harmful relationship with the humans some are helpful is there harmful also bacteria harmful bacteria is also present in the environment and this is a venn diagram that shows in the middle you can see the similarities and on either sides the difference occurs like i said uh, that is the similarity they are prokaryotic they are unicellular and single cell they are the kingdom monera they may be autotrophs or heterotrophs and the differences that is archaebacteria they live in the extreme circle salty hot methane temperature and they have the different chemical composition than the eubacteria and eubacteria they are found actually in on inside as well as the on surface of our body you can see that the food the vitamins nutrients are available from the eubacteria and also causes the diseases that as well as beneficial they are also harmful harmful to the humans so these are about the uh, kingdom monera in the last video i talk about the uh, archaebacteria and in this bacteria i talked to you about the eubacteria please go th children please go through this video if you have any comments please any suggestions or anything you just comment me and i think you guys can understand this video please share with your friends if you can follow me and thank you